Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Mythic Monday. Now for this week, uh, our deck is not built around one Mythic, it is built around two. It's built around Luminous Broodmoth and Prime Speaker Vanifar. Now why is that? It's just a way for our channel to celebrate the release of Double Masters because I'm super excited about that set and the potential reprints. But without further ado, let's get into our deck tech. Our deck is kind of a combo deck because we are go trying to win the game with only two pieces which are Vanifar and Luminous Broodmoth. Good news is that Vanifar can search for Broodmoth. So what is this deck trying to do? It's trying to get Vanifar on the field and activate it with a bunch of creatures that will untap Vanifar when we do. Now how will we abuse that fact? Luminous Broodmoth can get back any of the creatures that we sacrificed, meaning that let's say we activate Vanifar, sacrifice this, we are going to be able to tutor for something as a, for a 3 drop, but at the same time we're going to get it back because of Broodmoth, meaning we get to untap Vanifar for free, meaning that we can go deeper and deeper into our deck, into a stage where we're going to be able to search for the Reverend Hoplite. Now, what do we do with this creature? I mean, picture this. If you have a Vanifar, a Broodmoth, just these two, you will get at least three tokens from the Hoplite. Assuming we have our Worst Rider on the field, which is also a combo piece, we're going to be able to sacrifice the Hoplite one, a first rider, uh, and then we can get it once again, meaning that we're going to get three additional tokens. And with that, we at the minimum will have at that stage nine creatures on the field. Now, what do we do with nine creatures on the field and how do we win, win with those? We are going to search for a Gruesome Scratcher. And Gruesome Scratcher entering will give us the 10th creature that will deal 10 damage to our opponent. Then we can just sacrifice it to Wolf Strider once again. That will give us an additional 10 damage and that should be enough to one-shot our opponent. Now, this deck might seem a bit complicated and the combo might seem a bit complicated. So I'm going to just showcase it in a game against Sparky and then we're going to proceed to play against some people in uh, casual. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the game. So combo is online and the first thing that you always need to make sure you have is a luminous root moth. Now how do you do that? You do that by looping your two drop into a three drop into a four drop. Now sometimes you can skip the part of getting a two drop in case you already have a three drop on the field. But how it goes is you sacrifice whatever you have to get your corridor monitor. You then sacrifice that monitor to get your other 3 drop that untaps something so now you get it, you just untap your Vanifar once more and what something else you need to, to for this combo to work in one turn is some way to untap Vanifar in your hand in this case we have the corridor monitor so right now we're just going to sacrifice that scout sacrificing it gives us <coughs> luminous brood moth and now with luminous brood moth on the field it should be over so right now what do you do? you use your corridor monitor now what's the good thing about now having the Luminous Broodmoth on the field? It can make sure that our combo goes off. How? Now we can just tap our Prime Speaker Vanifar, sacrifice our Corridor Monitor, and because we have Luminous Broodmoth, it's gonna come, come back, meaning that we can untap Vanifar automatically and we don't need to search for something to untap Vanifar. Meaning that I can now just search for Wolf Strider. Wolf Strider is a very essential piece of this combo, so make sure you get it as soon as possible. Right now we're just going to continue with our combo, get a Sacrifice the Corridor Monitor, to then proceed and get the scout and then try to keep the scout uh, available to you as uh, much as we can don't like directly use it up so what you can do now at this stage you can just sacrifice the gilded goose sacrificing it just uh, let's just float a mana just in case we need it but you would most probably not need it i think everything is going to be covered at this stage we're just going to make any color of mana red is fine uh, we're just going to sacrifice that food this is not a step of that combo so i'm just making sure that in case i need it i just have it it's better to be safe than sorry so now we're just going to sacrifice our Gilded Goose and you guessed it, we're going to search for our Corridor Monitor. Our Corridor Monitor is going to untap our Prime Speaker Vanifar and from this stage we should be most likely done with the combos. Right now we're just going to sacrifice our Scout to get yet another Luminous Broodmoth. Trust me, it's all going to make sense very soon and I know you're going to pull off this combo and laugh a lot at how janky it is. So right now we're just going to get our Luminous Broodmoth once again. So right now what do you go for? You use your Prime Speaker Vanifar to sacrifice one of your Luminous Broodmoth. Now what does that do? It allows you to search library for any 5 drop. What do you search for? You search for your Reverend Hoplite. Your Hoplite is going to get you 3 tokens. You then will sacrifice your Hoplite to the Wolf Strider. You're going to sacrifice it just like uh, we see here. So that way you do get uh, any, uh, an additional number of tokens. You're going to describe it. That's not going to give you anything. Alright, so now how do you untap your Prime Speaker Vanifar? You use Wolf Strider once again, and this is why Wolf Strider is so important to this combo. So you use the Strider to sacrifice the monitor, Broodmoth is going to return it, that way we can just untap our Prime Speaker Vanifar. 
And now we can just continue with the combo. This is the last and final step, so make sure you do it correctly. And I believe in you and I know that you can do it correctly. So right now we're just going to sacrifice our corridor monitor. What, why do you do that? You do that to get the final way to untap your Vanifar, which is the scout. Now you're getting the scout, you're going to be able to untap your Vanifar. Now we're going to continue with this. So we're just going to tap our Vanifar to sacrifice our scout. Now you can get any four drop at this stage. I'm just going to get the Brood Moth because it is the namesake of the deck basically because we are playing a combo revolved around Brood Moth and Vanifar at the end. So we're just going to get our brood moth and that should be over because what do you do now you just sacrifice your brood moth to your vanifar and i'm sorry brood moth we all love you i hope my channel loves you <laughs> but you have to go for a bit so right now you can get your final combo piece which is the gruesome scratcher so what happens now but look at how many cards you have on the field i'm pretty sure this is going to be enough to kill your opponent if it's not or as far as playing a life game deck but this is usually enough to kill your opponent so right now what do you do you just use your strider to sacrifice it and since it does not have flying it's gonna come back with flying it's gonna enter the battlefield and it's just going to bring your opponent again for 15. so that's gonna be pretty much it for the combo let's hope you get to pull these off in the games and i'll see you very soon so going into game number one of band vanifar now we have we're missing just one thing which is vanifar obviously the namesake of the deck so we're gonna try to get, go for it and try kind of draw it and we're just going to concede this game because we drew our combo piece. So let's see you in the next game. Let's, let's just concede. Good game, opponent. So going into game number two of Band Vanifar. Now the only thing we're missing is just a way for us to untap our Vanifar. And when we do get that, we should be set. I'm just going to play the Triome because we want to hit our spells on next turn. And this is going to enter tapped anyways. So next turn is probably going to be a boost turn and then Fabled Passage get another green source. Or we could just not do that and wait. Uh, because we still have the mana to cast most of our spells so opponent is playing naya and the opponent is gaining a bunch of life this might prove to be uh, a problem just in case opponent gains too much life meaning that he is out of our reach but hopefully that won't happen so we're just going to play our gilded goose and pass next turn we can play the vanifar or we could play another goose it depends on what my opponent does or i can also just play the strider and that's also an option always keep your options uh, i mean always keep yourself some options because you don't always need to go for the combo as soon as uh, as you can because like it's better for you to see what your opponent is doing what they might have in hand what strategies they're playing don't just directly assume that oh i can go for vanifar directly always keep that in mind so opponent is probably gonna be playing some kind of uh, pump spell very soon that pumps his whole board maybe he's playing that three drop from theros that says whenever you target you cast something that targets it it's going to pump the whole team, that's also an option. Alright, so opponent is going to gain a bunch of life, which will be annoying. Seeing how opponent only has one card in hand, I think I'm just going to go for the banner for next turn. Yes, we don't have a way to untap it just yet, but we can just throw it next turn, or we can just combo off in two turns. I mean, you don't always have to go for the one turn combo with this deck. So opponent is taking a lot of time to search for one card, I don't know why. Um, we're just going to go be taking two, because like, actually we're just going to block... Uh, one and then just take two i mean yes he does gain life but that's not a problem well i don't know why my opponent did not attack with the initiate as well i mean it was a free attack we couldn't do anything to it now we're just going to play our strider as we said try to like dig for a way to untap our vanifar maybe that way we can ensure that we get to our combo pieces very soon i could have played the goose by sacrificing a food for the other goose but i don't think that's a wise option so we're just going to pass Let's see. So opponent, what could you be playing that would kill me this turn? I mean, maybe if he gets a land and Spire Charger would be annoying. Maybe Heroic Reinforcements would be annoying. Although most, I, I think both of these are not standard legal at the moment. So let's see what our opponent might do. So opponent is reading his cards very carefully. I did not expect that. I'm going to be very honest with all of you. I did not expect that. And I think if opponent keeps on gaining life, that's going to be a bit annoying for us. Because we can't kill him in one turn with like the bunch of life he's going to be gaining. Uh, the only thing I would have done differently from my opponent's side would have been to mutate this over the other healer's hog because we can already block this one. That way he would have guaranteed us not having uh, the ability to block both because we would have lost our goose anyways. But I mean maybe opponent is going to give him double strike next turn or something like that. Now we're trying to block but I do not pass the blockers. That's what's called a pro gamer move everyone. So we're just going to take 4. Opponent's going to go up to 26. I mean he's still within our reach technically. But let's hope he does not uh, continue this madness of gaining a lot of life because I do want to be able to pull off this combo. Uh, Broodmoth is not something we want, although we could have gotten it, but I just want to get a way to untap that Vanifar. Please, Duck. 
Uh, Paralyzed Druid is not always on top Vanifar, but I think we're just going to play... Just going to play the Vanifar at this stage, and maybe next turn we can play the Paradise Druid. And we might just sacrifice that boost to, to scry this turn, so like, not sacrificing Goose is still an option, so we don't have to worry about that too much. Because the only thing that's keeping us away from victory for next turn is just our lack of ability to get something to untap Vanifar. So as long as we have it, we can win, so that's why I don't mind uh, getting rid of the Goose to do that. And now we can just block with the Goose. And we can sacrifice it after combat damage has been dealt. That would ensure that he does not gain the 4 life. I mean, sure, he could gain 1, but I mean, 4 is better than 1, obviously. That is fine with us. I mean, it is a bit annoying that he's going to gain 3 life, but that's fine. So, opponent, let's hope we are able to kill you next turn. Let's seriously hope that we are able to kill you next turn, because I do not want you to keep on gaining life. The faster we can kill you, the better. And the opponent has a very weird take on the uh, mutate. I mean, I wouldn't play. I mean, this is the first time I see a mutate Naya deck, honestly. So I'm very excited to see what my opponent has. So Gildedus is gonna get sacked, and that's always a trick for you if you're new to the game. So when you sack something that's uh, before combat damage happens, uh, since your the creature has to deal damage for the life thing to happen, your opponent won't gain life because he did not actually get to deal that combat damage. So that's always something you should keep in mind. Um, we sadly do not get to draw a way for us to untap that banner for so we're gonna go from a one turn combo to a two turn combo but that should be fine so we shouldn't worry about it too much. So we're not gonna sacrifice our goose for the sole reason that it's a blocker for us to use against uh, the, our opponent's flying creature so we're just going to go with the paradise druid. Sorry paradise druid but you have to go we're gonna get the tower scout. Our scout is going to untap the banner for the loop that I showed you in the video previously so we're just going to tap the banner for to destroy the scout or sacrifice the scout actually we're not destroying it we're getting our luminous blood moth and we're not going to block with it for the main reason that we actually need it to survive to have our combo work so we're just going to pass and we might not even block with the goose because i think we need the goose to survive for the combo to work so assuming that opponent does not uh, have a way to present lethal i'm going to keep the goose back let's hope i get to keep the goose back so opponent can deal currently uh and then in, like flying damage you can just deal seven that's annoying, but that's not the end of the world, so we should be okay with it. Opponent is considering. I don't think there's any instant speed mutate and red, unless I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, we're just going to find out together. Hopefully, I'm not wrong. Um, we're going to take that damage because I don't want my opponent to have a pump spell that could kill our brood moth. Although, if our opponent has a pump spell, he could just kill us. Alright, so we take 7 damage, opponent's up to 35. Now, the challenge here is can we kill him with that much life? And we might be even. We might even, I mean, be able to just because we have another hoplite in our hand. So, uh, we draw away for us to untap Vanifar, that's always good to see. So, we're just going to tap our Vanifar to sacrifice our Gilded Goose. Now, sadly, we're not going to get a Gilded Goose because the Gilded Goose already has flying. If they ever print another one drop that can tap for mana in Arena, we could just use that. We could have used Lanowar Elves, but I mean, this card is, uh, this deck is very color hungry, so I don't think Lanowar Elves is that good of a. Pick. If they ever print a uh, one drop that can tap for multiple colors of mana in this game, uh, we could just use that. Maybe if they print Deathrite Shaman, we could just use that. So we're going to search for our uh, War Strider just to extend our field just a bit because, uh, as you can see, we need to deal a bunch of damage, especially seeing that how our opponent is at 35 life. Now we're just going to use the Vanifar to sacrifice our monitor, and now we can get our Tower Scout. Tower Scout is just going to untap the Vanifar. When we do untap the Vanifar, what happens? You guessed it, we can just sacrifice our Tower Scout once more. Sacrificing our Tower Scout can allow us to go and search for another Luminous Broodmoth. Uh, we're going to untap our Luminous Broodmoth, obviously. Thank, thank you for asking, uh, Deck. So, we're gonna get our Luminous Broodmoth. And right now, how much mana do we have access to? That's a very good question. So, we have access to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mana, meaning that we. We can do both, and that's something that's going to be a bit annoying. So what are we going to do at this stage? I think we're just going to sacrifice one of our War Strider. Now why is that? That's a very good question. Sacrificing it can allow me to go search for our Spark Double. Spark Double can be used to, uh, to copy the Tower Scout. And copying the Tower Scout allows us to do what? You guessed it, untap our Vanifar, and that way maybe you can search for other ways to untap our Vanifar later on. So opponent likes this combo, he wants to see it till the end. Thank you opponent for not conceding, it means a lot. So we're just going to sacrifice this goat. Yes goat, you are the best. I'm really sorry for killing you. 
Uh, so we're going to search for our Gilded Goose. God does not come back sadly, so we're just going to get Gilded Goose. Now we are going to sacrifice uh, the war, that's the spark double to our Ghost Rider, that way we kind of get it back because of, you know, the whole thing that we've been doing for the, the past uh, five minutes. So we're gonna have it copy the scout once more so we can make sure that we can untap our Vanifar. Now what happens? Now I think we're almost in the end stages of this combo, obviously. So now we can just go for our Vanifar, tap it to sacrifice our Gilded Goose. Gilded Goose, you served us very well this game, you blocked a lot. You did so much and I want to appreciate you for all of what you did. So right now we can just untap our Vanifar. Uh, if the game allows us, our game does allow us. So we're now going to sacrifice our monitor, do the whole loop that we've been doing for the past couple of hours. Now we can just get our tower scout uh, to untap Vanifar, but not this time, the next time. I'm gonna show you what I mean very soon. So we're just going to get our tower scout. It's not gonna untap anything because obviously Vanifar is already untapped. So we're going to submit anything at this stage. All right, goat, you can untap. Yes, untap our goat. So I think at this stage, before sacrificing my brood moth, I'm just going to use my Reverend Hoplite uh, to just get a bunch of tokens on the field before we do get into anything. Um, so we're just going to untap that. Now what do we do after untapping that? We just sacrifice it once again to get a bunch more tokens. And now that we already have our Hoplite on the field, I mean, you can just sacrifice our brood moth to just go search for the other combo beast which is the Scrouger. I mean, I could have done it a different way, but seeing how much my opponent has life, I think we need to go for that route. And one more thing that I want you to keep in mind is that, well, you can just use your Wolf Rider to sacrifice your other Wolf Rider. He's gonna come back, but he's gonna come back with an additional gold creature, so that's gonna increase the total damage that you can do. So this combo is always situational. I mean, the, the loop that I showed you always works, but you can al you always need to add your personal touch to it because you can always change something. And this like video is an example of what you can change with the combo, seeing how like for example we sacrifice Strider to the other Strider. So now we're just going to get our gruesome Scourger and that should be enough for us to win the game. So we're just going to deal a bunch of damage to our opponent, at 22 to be exact, and now we're just going to sacrifice our Scourger once again to deal the killing blow to our opponent. So I just wanted to thank all of you for watching. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe. It helps the channel a lot. Tell me in my Discord server what do you want me to play for next week's uh, next week episode of Mythic Monday. If you want to join the server, the link is in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.